everyone myself dr parth goswami and today i am going to teach you about membranous nephropathy type of nephrotic syndrome so let's begin with the definition why the name membranous nephropathy is given because friends in this particular type of nephrotic syndrome there will be thickening of there will be uniform diffuse thickening of glomerular basement membrane here the glomerular capillary wall is getting thickened and that's why the name membranous nephropathy is given so if you do the electron microscopy then there will be deposition of the immunoglobulin and complement in the glomerular basement membrane so here the deposit is seen in the membrane and that's why membranous thickening is present and that's why the name membranous nephropathy is given the most common type of nephrotic syndrome in adult is focal segmental glomerulosclerosis and at the second number second most common cause of nephrotic syndrome in adult is this membranous nephropathy right all right now let's see the etiopathogenesis of membranous nephropathy in the detail so obviously it's an immune complex mediated glomerular injury here the pathogenesis is immune complex deposition in the glomerulus now immune complex deposition could be because of two reason type 1 and type 2 there is a two category of this membranous nephropathy the type 1 is autoimmune disorder while type 2 is secondary to some other systemic disease right because of these two condition there be, there would be immune complex formation and they will get deposited in the glomerulus and it will lead to nephrotic syndrome and this is not a nephritic syndrome so glomeruli doesn't show any inflammatory cell right any infl inflammatory cell is not present it is not nephritic syndrome all right so first of all let's begin with the type 1 membranous nephropathy it's autoimmune disease and in this particular type 1 membranous nephropathy the patient will have antibody formation against the podocyte antigen particularly pla2r phospholipase a2 receptor antigen so antibody will form against this antigen which is present in the podocyte and so there will be in situ immune complex formation right here the antibody is form against the podocyte in the glomerulus so antigen antibody complex is present within glomerulus it is not in the blood circulation right it is in this is a example of in situ immune complex formation within the glomerulus the hamen nephritis is a experimental model which explain this particular mechanism in the detail right all right so this is the type 1 membranous nephropathy in which the antibody form against the podocyte antigen pla2r and in this way immune complex will form now type 2 membranous nephropathy here the immune complex is form in the blood circulation right here the immune complex formation is seen in the blood circulation and the immune complex from the blood circulation will ultimately get trapped in the glomerulus now you might have question why here immune complex formation occurs in the blood because in this particular syndrome in this particular type the antigen is present systemically it is not present in the glomerulus right the antigen could be drugs malignant cells autoimmune disease or infection the example of drugs which act as a antigen are penicillin ncts you know then certain malignancies like that of clung colon lymphoma melanoma the autoimmune disease like that of sle hashimoto thyroiditis you know infections like that of hbv hcv malaria syphilis cystosomiasis all these conditions exposure to gold and mercury like inorgan inorganic salt right all these substance act as a antigen that is present in systemically outside the glomerulus so the antibody will form against this antigen and they will form the immune complex which will ultimately get deposited in the glomerulus and then it will initiate a nephrotic syndrome right all uh, right so what is the mechanism of nephrotic syndrome in this particular condition so obviously the mechanism is immune complex formation and the deposition in the glomerulus either they will form within glomerulus or they will form in the blood circulation and will get trapped in the glomerulus so once this immune complex deposited in the glomerulus it will activate a complement system particularly it will activate c5 to c9 membrane attack complex this is the final complement sus substance that will get activated once the complement system is activated so this membrane attack complex will damage the podocytes and the me messenger cells right this membrane attack complex 
damage the cell membrane of the cell right so they will damage the podocyte and mesenchymal cells and once these cells are damaged it, there will be release of the protease and oxidants from it and that will lead to glomerular capillary wall damage and we know very well that once the glomerular capillaries are damaged you know plasma protein will leak from the blood circulation into the glomerulus and additionally whenever you have the complement system activation because of immune complex deposition you can have leukocyte activation as well and this leukocyte will release certain hydrolytic enzymes from it and that will also aggravate the damage right so this is the mechanism of glomerular injury due to immune complex deposition all right now let's see the light microscopic appearance of membranous nephropathy so obviously if you do the biopsy then in the glomerulus there will be uniform diffuse thickening of the glomerular basement membrane right that's why the name membranous nephropathy is given here the immunoglobulin and complement deposited in the membrane of the glomerulus right and you can uh, uh, you can do certain special stain for uh, you know demonstration of glomerular thickening for that you can perform pass stain or silver stain in the parodic acid sieve stain the membrane will look pink color while in the silver stain uh, there will be black color uh, you know uh, black colored membrane thickening so this special stain can be used and it will demonstrate a spike in the glomerulus as well between the immune complex deposition that we will see in later on in the slide if we see the tubules in the light microscopy then it can show a droplet of reabsorbed lipoprotein right the droplet vacuoles can be seen in the proximal convoluted tubular epithelial cell the interstitium interstitium means space between the two tubules right the space between the tubules is known as the interstitium in the advanced stage it can show a chronic inflammation and fibrosis all right so this is the special stain this is a silver stain right it demonstrate a glomerular basement membrane thickening as a black color you can see a black colored thickened basement membrane while this is the parodic acid sieve stain in which you can see a pink color thickened basement membrane right sometime uh, you know this particular condition looks like an duplication of a glomerular basement membrane so it can demonstrate a duplication of gbm right this is the spike and dome appearance if you see uh if you see carefully then you can see a spike right this is because of irregular immunoglobulin and complement deposition and that's why it can show a spike from the basement membrane right all right so these spikes is usually seen in the electron microscopy right if you see if you do the electron microscopy of such patient then glomerular capillary wall is thickened and it will show a protrusion from the basement membrane from the basement membrane there is a irregular spike protruding right and this uh, this protruding irregular spike will give a appearance like that of spike and dome pattern and these spikes are seen because of irregular immune complex deposition that is because of irregular immune complex deposition so these are the spike right all right now immunofluorescence microscopic appearance of this particular membranous nephrotic syndrome so obviously if you do the immunofluorescence microscopy then immunoglobulin g and the complement c3 will get deposited in the glomerular basement membrane and as this particular condition is immune complex mediated right the mechanism is immune complex mediated glomerular injury so the immunofluorescence will show a granular appearance of deposition whenever the immune complex deposition is the mechanism for development of nephrotic syndrome the appearance is always granular so here there will be granular deposition of igg and complement c3 right all right so that was about the immunofluorescence microscopic appearance if we see the clinical features of this patient then obviously it's a nephrotic syndrome so patient will have nephrotic syndrome features like that of uh, you know protein urea then uh, hypoalbuminemia edema hyperlipidemia lipid urea right i have already discussed that in my nephrotic syndrome lecture so there is no need to rep uh, repetition of the same thing right so you know very well the clinical features of nephrotic syndrome right there will be non selective heavy protein urea more than 3.5 gram in a 24 hours 
and you know one interesting fact is that these patients are non-responsive to the steroid the steroid will not work in such patients so prognosis is not uh, much good right you have to give other treatment apart from steroid so friends uh, thank you very much and this is all about the membranous nephropathy again i am telling the main characteristic feature is that there is a glomerular basement membrane thickening and you can do a two type of special stain per aridic acid sieve and silver stain for that silver stain demonstrate a black colored gbm thickening while in the per aridic acid sieve there is a pink color basement membrane thickening it can look as a duplication of glomerular basement membrane and because of irregular immune complex deposition spike can be seen from the spike can be seen that is protruding from glomerular basement membrane so this is all about the you know membranous type of nephropathy nephrotic syndrome thank you very much and see you soon with the next video till then take care and bye bye